how do you be happy on the holidays when all you're doing is thinking about the loved ones that you miss? Hey, Jason here, and if you've been watching the channel, you've been seeing me go through Johannesburg, showing you how beautiful it is, how safe it is here, and how lovely the people are here. And also, uh, just to sh start getting rid of some of these stigmas that people have in Johannesburg and show you what the country, the city really looks like. And most importantly, I've been talking to you about success, what it is, and how to achieve it in three areas of your life, happiness, health, and wealth. And today I want to focus on happiness. We're two days away from Christmas, one of the most festive times of the year, no matter where you live in the world. And however, with all of that, it's still one of the most depressing times of the year for a lot of people walking around also. And what I mean by that is a lot of people are actually missing loved ones or they going through trauma or things like that. And Christmas brings a lot of that up for a lot of people. It internalizes a lot of um, deep, health down, deep healthy and emotions. And this is one of the seasons where it's really hard to just keep holding it down because everybody's usually happy <laughs> you know this is one of the few times in the world no matter what where you go most people are pretty festive they're happy you see smiles on people's faces and so it brings a lot of that internal trauma up and now i can tell you even from me personal experience uh you know with the transition of cc the beginning of this year and you know i started 2022 you know still saying hey this is jason and cc we're a husband and wife team and we're here to help you reclaim your physical and financial health. And I thought that'd be going for the end of the year. Like we planned on spending this um, this whole year in the United States. We were going to just travel around and uh, just really just sightsee the whole country. And then uh, January 23rd, uh, you know, the universe is like, nope, those plans are not in play. Like it's time for you to think of something else. And it crushed me for a while. I'm going to be completely honest with you. And Think about it like this, going from the last eight, nine years, CC and I, we were together 24 hours, seven days a week. You know, unless we were at a conference or something, or for some reason we weren't in the same city. But minus those few exceptions, we were together 24 seven. And it, we loved it. <laughs> like, that's what a lot of people didn't get. Like, we loved spending time together. We loved talking together. We loved reading books together. Uh, all of these things, so we loved our life together. And to go now to where it's 24 7 it's just me you know <laughs> like i look i'm looking at the couch here you know she's not sitting there let, stretched across reading a book she's not watching Grey's anatomy uh so there was times you know especially in the beginning where i was missing her horrible like i just everything was reminding me of her, especially when i was in texas like all i was doing was just breaking down crying and when i walked when i drove past uh, where we used to live in arlington drove past the comedy place we used to go to, drove past the first place we ever met and had dinner. You know, all those things were sad and it was just bringing up these memories. And then I started realizing, I was like, yo, you're going through depression, man. And I was like, you have to go back to your tools. And so what I mean by that with my tools is, you know, if you're not familiar with my complete story, especially if you're in South Africa, I was in the military, I went to the Iraq war, I was there, um, and after that, you know, um, and let me just say this, every soldier who goes to war, especially if you're in an active war zone, you have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, you may not be clinically diagnosed with it, let's just be honest, going to war is not a natural event, and seeing the worst of hum human nature, it messes you up. Now, for me, I was uh, medically diagnosed with anxiety extreme anxiety NOS none otherwise no none otherwise specified and it's just a nice term to say PTSD without saying PTSD because it keeps the numbers low to say oh well only this this amount of soldiers have PTSD but that's you know government all of that ooh -ha, who cares and so because of uh, going through PTSD uh, doing different type of ther uh, therapy modalities like uh, CBT cognitive uh, brain, uh, CBT, cognitive brain therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, I think that's what it is, uh, which doesn't really work, I'm gonna be uh, completely honest, which is not a good modality. To where I had gave up on the psych system, everything like that, I realized they were just pushing pills down me. And then CC started helping. So CC was a clinical social worker. 
licensed clinical social worker. She had a doctoral, doctorate degree, everything. And one of her modalities that she was teaching me was ACT therapy, acceptance commitment therapy. Meaning you accept what happened to you, you're committed to change it, and you're doing it in a therapeutic way for you. And so this modality really did help me. And this is how it equipped me with uh, giving me some tools for uh, whenever depression and stuff like that started kicking in to where I went from maybe months to being, being uh, extremely depressed to where it started turning into, you know, days and hours. And even now, when you see me, um, you know, sometimes I could be having a little mild moment of depression and people don't even know it. They're thinking I'm still happy. And anyone can achieve this. And it just takes some, takes some uh, tools and you have to build the, the muscle of this. And so you have to, we have to realize that we've been programmed to act a certain way from society, uh, from your government, depending on what type of country you live in, and up to your uh, religious background also, whatever your family upbringing is. So all of these things have us living a very specific way. And so if we want to change our lives and start changing things around us, we have to stop living that specific way and live the way that we want to live. And so the first part of acceptance commitment therapy, what I did was I started focusing in on what makes me happy. And you should do that too. Really start thinking about this. What makes you happy? What is it the things that make you happy? What brings a smile to your face? One of the things that makes me happy is watching cat videos. So I, I can go hours watching cat videos and people be like, dude, this, this dude kind of crazy. And I'm like, hey, I don't care. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> And uh, one of the other things I like to do is I like to walk in nature. If you see some of the videos with, that I posted up of Cece where she talked, like, she'll tell you, yo, this dude will go walk for hours. It makes me happy to just be out in nature and just breathing fresh air, seeing the trees, hearing the trees uh, crackle. And that makes me happy. Another thing that makes me happy is traveling. Uh, like, you know, so many people are always asking me, like, oh, when are you going to find a home country? When are you going to find a place that you can just call home? I don't want to call a place home. I call this earth my home. It makes me happy to travel and keep learning new cultures, keep learning new environments, keep learning just how people are in different areas. And so think about that first. What makes you happy? And it can be small things such as seeing a butterfly to big grand things to like, uh, hey, do you want to live in a certain type of house or something? And then that ties into the second thing, which is, what do you want your life to look like? Like, you have to design your life. You need to start being self-made. And this is why most of us, this depression and all of these problems just keep going on because we're not ever taught to focus on what makes us happy or what do we want our life to look like. And so with what you want your life to look like, this can be materialistic things. Like, there's nothing wrong with being materialistic. Like, I'm going to give you an example. This flat that I live in right now, it's a bachelor flat, like 43 square meters, really beautiful place. Perfect for me, perfect size. I have places to study, I can exercise if I want to jump rope uh, and don't feel like walking down to the gym. I can just look outside of the city, I can see the stadium out here. Uh, it's a beautiful place. I can see Mall of Africa, not Mall of Africa, Museum of Africa right over here at my window. I can see people on the street, I can just people watch really nice place. However, once my lease is up here, I'm, I don't want to be in this place anymore. It's not where I want in my life anymore. Now it's time to upgrade my life. So the next place that I want, I, I want a penthouse apartment. I want to have a penthouse living. And a lot of people will be like, why would you go spend extra money on that? It's because it's what I want. And so really start thinking about what do you want for your life? Stop giving a fuck about what other people tell you you should have for your life or what, you should, what they would do with your life. Because they're not doing anything with their life. So what do you want with your life? And remember, the first thing you want to do is what makes you happy? And the second one, and this is just as important, what do you want in your life? And make it materialistic. Sometimes we need to be materialistic. We need to start looking around and be like, yo, you know what? I want a nicer car. I want this. I want that. And then you'll start seeing all this stuff that you don't want that you're holding on to. You'll start letting it go. And it'll let go a lot of that negative and pent-up energy that's been built in those things. 
And then the third thing you want to do is you want to ask, ask yourself this question. How do I want to live my life? And listen to the words. How do I want to live my life? Stop focusing on other people's lives. Stop caring about what other people do with their life. How do you want to live your life? And when you start doing that, what you're doing, you're creating a standard of living. You're creating a standard of your life. And this is where a lot of people get really confused about me because I have standards of living for different facets of my life. Uh, like I can tell you this, like uh, with relationships. So there's a lot of places that I go to because I'm very metrosexual. I get manicures, pedicures. I get groomed on a weekly uh, basis, get massages, stuff like that. Most guys who look like me and bulky and big like me don't do that that much. So with that being said, like there's a lot of nice looking women in these places and there's a lot of times they're interested in me. However, I have a standard of my life is, which is I do not create drama in my life. Meaning if it's something that I have 100% control of, I will not let it affect my life. So I don't date women that work in places that I go to. I don't date women that work in restaurants that I go eat. I'm plant-based vegan, so there's not that many restaurants that I have to choose from in the first place. I'm not going to bring drama dating someone and then it don't work out or we're just not interested or not compatible. And now it's awkward going to a place that I want to go to. So, like, that's a standard of my living. Another one of my standards of my living is I don't date women who live in the places where I live. And it's not uh, saying something wrong with that. It's just saying... I don't want people having access to me 24-7. Like, I know how I want my life. I, I live a very private, secluded, conservative life. <laughs> Most people even know, they're like, man, you're very liberal. I live my life very conservative. I don't like having pe people having access to me. Uh, I also, uh, I just don't like drama. And it's something that I don't have time for. I have zero tolerance for it. And so with me potentially dating someone that lives in the place where I live, it's just, a, it's just an opportunity for drama and stuff to happen. So I create a standard in my living where I don't do these things. And a lot of people just don't understand that. And then I, in the beginning, it used to confuse me. I'm like, why would somebody want to talk to me? You know, I'm, I come here, I'm a client, blah, blah, blah. And then I started realizing people don't have standards of their, for their life. People are expecting luck to help them. And one of my favorite quotes from Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, he says, riches never respond to wishes. We can't wish for our life to be a certain way. We have to demand it to be a certain way. And the only way to demand this for your life is to start setting standards. How do you want your life to look? How do you want to live your life? This is your life. Create your standard of living. Instead of letting the government or your family or your environment create the standard for you. And so when you start practicing all three of these, you're going to start seeing internal happiness come from within. You're going to start seeing you don't need people outside of you to make you happy anymore. You're going to also start seeing that you're going to be happy when you're alone. And most people can't handle that. <laughs> and they're going to be looking at you like, yo, what is wrong with this dude? Or what's wrong with this chick? Like, it kind of weird. And so those are the three things you want to start focusing on. And this is how you'll start and you'll start becoming happy. 